Hi, my name is Suzanne Grandy. I'm a certified master groomer in Tampa, Florida, and I am here with Finlay. Finlay's a West Highland White Terrier, and he's absolutely adorable. And I'm going to share with you today how I trim a West Highland White Terrier in a pet trim. Uh, this is not a correct trim for a West Highland White Terrier. Correctly, they're hand stripped, and the hair is, the shedding hair is literally plucked out by hand. And when that is done, it started as a puppy and continues through their whole life. And their coat literally will shed out easily. Um, but for most of the pet dogs, we clipper them. So I'll show you how I do that. You ready to go? Huh? Are you ready? Okay. Let's get busy. Yeah. So I will start by clipping his ears. I trim about the top third of the ear off. So I'm going to set my clipper on the longest setting for the outside of the ear. And I'm going to clip off the hair off the outside of the ear. For about the top third of the ear. Then I'm gonna to go to the shortest setting. I'm gonna do the inside of the ear, about a third of the ear. And correctly on Westies, they should keep this fan of hair in front of their eyes. But for most of the pet dogs, I don't keep the whole fan of hair. So I'm going to take out just the corners with the very longest setting on the blade. So I'm just gonna very lightly come in. I don't wanna overdo it, just to take those corners out. And on the shortest setting, I'm going to trim the pads of his feet, just taking the hair off the bottom of the feet. I can show you on one of these back feet here. It's important to do this with your dog because you don't want your dog slip sliding on tile or hardwood floors. Uh, if you leave this hair on the bottom of the feet, it's like running in your socks. So you don't want your dog to be slipping on the floor because that can be bad for their joints or their back. And especially if you allow them to jump up on furniture, when they go to jump off of the furniture, if they have this hair on the bottom of the feet, they slide and that can injure the dog. And Finley's extremely sensitive. I cannot trim under his tail at all because it really bothers him. And because I keep this nice length of hair underneath him, I don't shave his tummy because it would ruin this whole area and it would actually create a bit of a hole there. So I do keep all the hair on the belly. I will go in with, with my blade and just take this tiny little area right here, but I'm gonna keep all this hair. Good boy. Yes. That's a good boy. All right. Let's see. So to set in my top line, I'm going to use a four blade. And I think the biggest mistake many groomers make with this type of job is they cut the hair too short. When you do that, it cuts into the undercoat of the dog and it makes choppy lines. And that's probably the biggest mistake I see groomers make is using a seven blade or a five blade on the dog absolutely ruins the look of the coat. So I'm going to take my four blade and I'm gonna go straight down the middle of the top line.
Okay. And I'm gonna skim off the sides here with the four blade. tail up and skim down at an angle leaving a little V in front of the tail. I can take my four blade at the back of the tail. As you can see with him standing four square, stand. By doing that, he has a little bit of a raise up here in his top line. So I'm gonna go back over that area specifically with a five blade just to level out his top line. So right at the highest point. I'm gonna take it just a bit shorter. But I'm being careful not to cut down into this hair because this is where you start to get your choppiness when you use a blade. Good boy. I know, I love you too. So now I'm gonna come around to the front. And I'm going to use the five blades for the sides of his neck. Down into the shoulder. Exposing his shoulder. And off the front of the shoulder. Good boy. Turn, 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 turn. Good boy. Do the same thing on this side. Good boy. You take this five and skim off right here. Most Westies, I would go real tight in here with the five, but because he's so sensitive, I'm not gonna do that with him. Up under the neck up front here, I'm gonna use a four blade against the grain. Come here, bud. Good boy, I know. So I like it really tight right here. So I'm using the four again. Good boy, over here. Over here. Good boy. So there's a lot of people who love the West Highland White Terrier who say that this coat should never be clippered. It should only be stripped. And that that's true in, in a perfect world, but many pet Westies do not get stripped. So 
you don't ruin the coat if you stay on top of this outer coat. I think you only ruin the coat and cause problems if you go too short. So we're staying on top of this undercoat as best we can. So now I am going to use my thinning shears to blend in the sides. So I'm going to comb this hair up and thin off the top of it. Good Turn this way a bit. Good boy. I like to show a nice tight terrier body, a rather squared off style with my terriers. Good boy. I put a nice straight line underneath. I like this area behind nice and flat. Probably should go ahead and scissor around his feet. So, we need scissors. Yes, we do. That's cool. So, to scissor around the feet, I'm going to take very fronts of the feet nice and short right up to the toenails. you pick up the legs you don't want to lift them too high 
I'm supporting the hawk so he can't jerk his leg. some hair here to show off his hocks. These are his hocks. And I try to do the lower legs like a pillar, just right in this area, I like it nice and cylindrical. legs I'm going to somewhat round up into the elbow area. And the same thing up into the armpit area to help to give him that terrier style. do not like the underside of the dog to be too long. Westy has always been one of my favorite dogs to groom. They're wonderful little dogs, great family pets. Westies should be groomed about once a month to stay in good condition. I've groomed Finlay all his life, so he's well trained. He knows what to do when he comes in. He knows how to stand. He doesn't have to have a collar on. He knows what's expected of him. that out, don't we, Finley? Oh, no. It's okay. I've already washed and blow-dried Finlay before I started this video. You always want to be sure that your dog is completely dry before you start trimming them. You don't want them to be even slightly damp.
some groomers tend to shave them really short and then leave a really definite line all the way down the side. <clears throat> that look is completely incorrect for a Westie. And although some people do prefer that look, it, it's not correct. If you're clippering a Westie, they should look just like they would if they were hand stripped. The look is the same whether you clipper it or strip it. So the idea is to have everything flowing down nice and straight. You don't want hair jutting out to the side. And you want everything blended and flowing nicely. So again, I'm doing kind of a half circle shape up into the armpit. Good boy. Then when you drop the leg down, it has a nice straight off the shoulder flow to it. And you can see, put your foot down, put your foot down, put it down, there we go. You can see how everything go, just goes straight down off the dog. And if you see an area like this right here where it's not flowing smoothly, you can come in with your thinning shears and smooth that down. Good boy. Are you handsome? Yes, you are. Oh, I don't let them come up on me while I'm actually working unless I've released them from work and say, okay. And then they can come up and get their hugs and their praise, right? Yes, you get your hugs and your praise. And then we ask them to go back to work. I like to teach them the difference, right? All right, now this head should be nicely round. I'm going to trim off the beard And I'm gonna go straight across under here to start with. So when you're finished, the nose and the eyes should be the center. When the ears are up, should be nicely rounded so that you have a nice circle. If he were a show dog, when you see the show dogs with the hair up really firm and full, that is because it's been chalked and hairsprayed. I don't chalk and hairspray the pet dogs, so, and because they're not hand stripped, you will see it fall flatter than you would a show dog, but that's 
simply because it's not chopped and sprayed. The idea of leaving this fan of hair in front of the eyes, and I did trim out the corner of the eyes, but as you can see, he's still got quite a bit of fullness here. That helps to shorten the nose and to not leave it um, balded out in between the eyes. So you always wanna leave all this hair in here and that shortens the entire length of the head. If he were a show dog, when I pushed all this forward, he would probably have bangs all the way to his nose. Um, but that typically show type grooming doesn't work out well for pet dogs um, in everyday life. Some people really like that look and they do work very, very hard to keep it but most of my clients find it's too much hair in the face. So I do a balance in between, not too short, not too long. Going to scissor off the edges of these ears so it has a nice clean look. Good boy. Is it nap time? Come on, get up. We got work to do. Yeah. We've got work to do. We just had a thunderstorm, so I don't think he's very happy about that. Wait. You don't like thunderstorms, do you? Finlay is an amazingly smart dog. He does therapy work at the Moffitt Cancer Center. He goes in regularly and helps to cheer up people and take their mind off of their problems and the stuff that they're going through. And he does an amazing job at it. And he's just the best little dog. He loves everybody and does his job so well, don't you? You do. So I'm spending extra time trying to get this head nice and round. under here. How this is looking. Again, I like this underline nice and straight under here. Good boy. All right, let's work on your tail. See the tail. So the tail should be carrot shaped. Here, let's get up on your front. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Stay. Quit leaning. 
moving forward. I like to make sure my dogs are standing four square when I'm working on them. When I do the tail, I hold it up <coughs> in the position that it would be in if it were being carried erect at the moment. So when I do a carrot type tail, I take it very close on the back of the tail and the V I left here helps to blend it from the top line into the tail so it's a nice smooth even flow. And by taking more off the back of the tail it shortens the length of the dog, it doesn't leave. If he had hair on the back of the tail it would lengthen his body quite a bit. So I took as much as I could off the back of the tail. And I'm going to scissor it up into a carrot shape with it being held in the position it would be in if he were alert and standing on his own, alert and excited. Putting the tail where it should be. I'm going to brush over him with the terrier palm pad. Get all the loose hair off. And now I'm going to take a stripping knife, a really fine tooth stripping knife. And I'm gonna take out any shedding loose undercoat. By doing this, it's gonna help get a shorter look to the hair because it's taking out all this fluff. This also helps me to keep a uh, better texture to his coat. When I do this, I hold the skin taut and drag this tool through the hair. And as you can see, it gets out all this shedding hair. This also gives me a more natural appearance to the coat. So even though I use the thinning shears and scissors on it, I'm gonna get more of a hand stripped look and a natural look by removing all this undercoat. Here, turn, turn, turn. This way, this way, this way. Don't lean. I never let dogs lean on me when I'm working on them. I like them to be responsible for their own feet. This technique is called carding. And I'm using an extra fine knife to do it. It's what they call them. They're, they're a stripping knife. They have teeth that helps to grab the loose undercoat. And it's made for stripping dogs. So I can go right down into the thigh and off the back of the dog, down into the shoulders.
This helps to maintain a healthy coat. Good boy. Yeah. Did that feel good? Did that feel good? Huh? Did that feel good? Yeah. Okay. That's a good boy. Let's work on this head a little bit more. It needs a little bit of help, doesn't it? Yeah. Does it need a little bit of help? It does. All right. He's almost finished. I just realized I didn't bring money. <laughs> well, money helps. Um, do you want me to go back and get it? Or? No, you can just mail me a check. No, I'll bring one tomorrow. I won't mail it. I'll bring it tomorrow. I can't believe I did that. I, I'm, I, I'm, oh, I know I carried $100 though on my wallet, but I had a problem with my visa. How did it go? Very good, right? He's a perfect model. Is he? He is. Aren't you? Yeah. Finley, you're gorgeous. You're a good boy. He is a good boy. All right, I think we're finished. Are we finished? Yes. So where's his hot spot? It's right between his, it's under his tail, down low up under here. Oh. And it's still got all the scabbiness on there. It started to lift off. But so that's a hot spot? I think so. Sometimes they get those either from a food allergy or a bug bite. Or sitting in water in the out in the yard? Nah. Oh. Not usually. Oh. So it's usually it's an allergic reaction to something. My dog gets them from food allergies.